I must admit, I wasn't terribly excited to see this movie initially because movies about black American icons as of late have been... So I was anxious, I was nervous, but Chadwick Boseman holds it down. Before Brown versus the Board of Education, before his acceptance into the Supreme Court, the plot picks up with Thurgood working as the sole lawyer for the NAACP. In this role, he's a superhero nomad, literally going from town to town, defending the defenseless. And then he picks up and goes to the next town. Teaming up with trial lawyer Sam Friedman, Thurgood is being dispatched to Connecticut to defend a black chauffeur named Joseph Spell. Spell is being charged for allegedly raping the wife of his employer, Eleanor Strubbing. If you know your American history, then you know that simply winking at a white woman is an instant death sentence for a black man during Jim Crow. As if defending Spell wasn't challenging enough, the judge rules that Thurgood Marshall can't speak directly in court because of his race. So at this point, the only thing that he can do is whisper to instruct Friedman. I was pleased to see that Bozeman nailed the intensity, the resolve, and the sense of sarcasm of a young Thurgood Marshall. I came into this movie a little jaded because I'm a huge fan of Lawrence Fishburne's one man show called Thurgood. His performance was excellent as an older version of the Supreme Court Justice looking back on his life. So in my opinion, after having that precedent set for this American icon, re-embodying him will be twice as hard, in my opinion. There's also a sincere camaraderie between Bozeman and Gad. I can only imagine what it was like to see Thurgood Marshall in real life action. He was a mastermind as he was guiding and coaching Freeman who was reluctant to take the case at all. At points, he was seamlessly switching between being Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan, fulfilling whatever space needed to bring out the best in his partner. And it just felt like at all times, he was just on a different level than everyone else. Keep in mind that he cannot speak directly in court. I love the acting, especially from the judge, the prosecution, and strubbing. You feel that with their entire being, they wanted Spell to fry in the electric chair. I'm always appreciative of the actors who take on the task of embodying these sinister racist characters. It helps people who are ignorant to this time in American history to see these challenges, these battles from the black perspective. And when you have movies like this one, like Selma, like Detroit, like the Nat Turner film, they serve as progress reports. They're saying this is how things were in the world and in America 60 years ago, 100 years ago, 40, 50 years ago. Some things have changed and many things have stayed the same. And the soundtrack composed by Marcus Miller is very smooth, very jazzy. Take your lady out on a nice date, someplace where she gotta go and put a dress on, had a soundtrack playing in the car, have her feeling very sophisticated. And of course you know it wouldn't be a civil rights movie soundtrack without a title track by Carmen. Okay, moving on to the cons in this film. There are some cheesy lines here and there. It's kind of weird because with the fact that Thurgood can't speak directly in court, it kind of pushes him back into the plot as the 1A star instead of the marquee star. During certain sections of the movie, it seems like he and Sam are competing for camera time. This approach though made me want to see more of Thurgood Marshall's background. If I had it my way, I would have shown some flashbacks from his childhood and from his time at Howard University. For example, before coming home every day, Thurgood Marshall's father would go to a local court in Baltimore and sit in the back and listen to court cases and then go home. Once home, he, Thurgood, and Thurgood's brother would reenact the case and they would argue the defense and the prosecution. And at every turn, Thurgood's dad would challenge their logic. This helped build up Thurgood Marshall's critical thinking skills at a very young age. Also, Thurgood's mother pawned her wedding ring to pay his tuition at Howard. Lastly, I wanted to see how Charles Houston, the Dean of Howard Law, challenged and trained Thurgood and his classmates. Not only was Houston an accomplished civil rights lawyer, but his classes were legendary for how vigorous they were. These brief vital scenes could be cut to while Thurgood is strategizing with Friedman or while he's walking towards the courthouse. Not only would these scenes dive further into his foundation and mission, and they would probably only add 10 to 15 extra minutes on the runtime. Needless to say, this movie is timely. I wish we had a Thurgood Marshall for this time 
So many people who were silenced need him. To be able to wield the law in your favor as a black man during Jim Crow is nothing short of a miracle. In 2017, the justice system fails innocent people who were killed on videotape, who were killed on police cameras. Thurgood Marshall was delivering justice with paper and pencil. Last two quick things, my dad, my aunts, my uncles all grew up in the same neighborhood area on the west side of Baltimore as Thurgood Marshall. In that area, there's a fairly large park called Druid Hill Park. During Thurgood's time, black people couldn't go to certain sections of Druid Hill. In fact, when Marshall was 13, the city's first public pool for black people called Pool Number no. 2 was constructed in Druid Hill Park. This pool was half the size of Pool Number no. 1, which was the whites only pool. And when you think about Thurgood Marshall's life as being a catalyst for desegregation, the concept of quote unquote separate but equal facilities really hits home. I really enjoy watching this movie. There are some serious emotional moments that cut to the core. I'm giving Marshall a 7.9 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, like and share this video. If you would like to help me make more videos, pledge one dollar whatever you feel to my Patreon page. This keeps me out of the Hunger Games and in front of yo face. We got more movie reviews coming your way, and we got more book reviews coming your way, and we got more of that random stuff coming your way. I'm in the bathroom! <laughs>